a shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Waharuka Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Most High God. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, Yeshua, Jehovah, etc. The Rokah Kodash is the Holy Spirit that gives us the understanding of this truth. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth. Pushing his gospel in all truth and sincerity. Shalom also to the few aquats who are sincerely seeking his truth. It's the brother Yarayaya Shar'ala from the GMS Italy camp. And I just wanted to do a lesson on the first book of Maccabees. You know, starting from verse 20. So this story is, is a true history, you know, in which many saints out there, many stupid people who don't, who don't make researches, you know, they believe the Bible to be just stories put up like that, you know, they don't know it's actual history, you know, and the Bible is the most correct history book you can find circulating around, you know. Now, this is a website I I got from from the elders of um of Dallas, the the GMS Dallas camp. You know, I believe the elder Arayala. You know, the name of the site is worldhistory.org. You know, or you can also type in ancient.eu. It takes you to the same site, and this goes into you know. And let me just that's a word. You see, it's the World History Encyclopedia. You know which you can search out different content from the ancient times and what you're going to find is you know the bible is not a book to 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 to, to be kept aside it's, it's not a child's play man the bible is pure history man everything that's written in the bible is pure history and now you can understand the, tr the reason why they try to they try to, you know, take off the, the apocryphas, you know, the first book, second book of Maccabees, you know, the first um, first and second Esdras, you know, which are part of the original Esdra in the, in the Old Testament. Um, um, the book of Tobit, you know, Bella the Dragon, you know, Wisdom of Solomon, um, Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach. You know, there is a reason why they took out this book letter of jeremiah you know all this they're doing all this you know to hide the identity of the so-called wicked who are this who are the devils you know those ruling this 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 kingdom as we know it right now you know they try to hide their their identity but at the end of the day you know the truth always prevails you know so the tight the title of this lesson i'm still thinking of a title it's going to be um the defilement of the temple, something of that sort, you know. So the story is also the story is found in the first book of uh, Maccabees. We're going to go into that, but first I just wanted to read uh, a few excerpts from this. You know, speaking about Antiochus first, Sultan now becomes emperor and continued his father's policy of encouraging a homogeneous empire which blended Hellenistic cultural values with those of the Near East. Scholar Goma O'Brien describes the Seleucid policy. He says, to rule as Greek as Greeks in an immense sea of non-Greeks would have been foolish, if not impossible. So the Seleucids became both with their own administration forming merely the newest of a series of ethnic layers that went back centuries. Seleucus and his successors were happy to embrace the cults, gods, and practices of the venerable states that were before them. That was the spirit of Hellenism. 
and amalgamation of West and East that forged a dynamic new era, and the Seleucid Enterprise was its clearest manifestation. Now, the the Antiochus that is spoken of in the book of um, First Maccabees, you know, is the fourth, in which we're also going to touch on him. But let's read. It says. And after that Antiochus had smitten Egypt, he reigned again in the hundred forty and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude and entered proudly into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlesticks of light and all the vessels thereof and the table of the shewbread and the pouring vessels and the vows and the censer of gold and the veil and the crown and the golden ornaments that were before the temple or which he pulled off you know he also took he, he took also the silver and the gold and the precious vessels also he took the hidden treasure which he found and when he had taken all away he went into his own land having made a great massacre and spoken very proudly so you see this is when they came into our temple and he said he entered proudly and this is just you know this is um this is a characteristic of the wicked you know of the so of so called esau in which you can find that in which first of all you know this temple that's talking of you know it's the ancient temple which were physical now we have a different temple in which our bodies are the new temples you know this is the book of first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 says what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy spirit which is in you which ye have of yahweh and ye are not your own so the temple now is now translated to something else spiritual the first was physical in order to to teach us to show us what the transition we're going to go into the spiritual just like the laws you know they were written they were written you know on stones which represents our stony hearts you know but when the most I, uh, when yahweh shai comes back you know these laws are going to be written in our inward parts in our hearts we would not be able to sin anymore you know and we used to offer sacrifices you know for the cleansing of our sins which was a physical pra practice but when yahweh shai came it was the perfect sacrifice in which we don't need to offer those same sacrifices anymore so you see this is the transition you had the physical temple and now the temple has been translated to our bodies our bodies is the is the temple of the holy spirit in which the holy spirit is the spirit that comes directly from the most high yahweh Shai, to help us understand this truth you know that's what links us to the father you know so if you don't have the holy spirit in you then you have a different kind of spirit you know that's the counterpart of the holy spirit you know demonic spirit so anyway um i wanted to i wanted to get you know you know the the, the attribute of this um of this wicked you know they are proud they are proud they are boastful you know they believe they believe everything is is you know everything is all in their hands now this is this is the book of Obadiah chapter one verse one. It says the vision of Obadiah thus said the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai, and an ambassador is sent among the hidden. Arise ye and let us raise up and against I in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the hidden. Thou hast greatly despised. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Though thou thou has um excuse me, it says, the pride of thine heart has deceived thee, though that dwellest in the cleft of the rock, whose habitation is high, that sets in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And this you can see even in modern days, Esau is the first one to build all these skyscra skyscrapers because he is used to 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 dwell in mountains, you know. The Mount Seir, which is um, his first habitation, not really his first his um his first habitation. Um, what am I saying? Um, 
Khan. That was his first um, habitation, Sierra, you know, before he moved to, to the mountains of Caucasus, you know. So he says, Thou that dwellest in the, the cleft of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that said in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Because Esau believes that no one can bring him down. He believes that he's going to run this world as he has been doing for centuries. He believes he's going to run this world forever. That's why he's trying to put his, 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 um, his NWO, you know. That's why he's trying to put a stamp on each one of us. That's why he's trying to, you know, inject you with um, some spiritual kind of demonic things, you know, that are going to take over your brain very soon, you know. That's why the MOTB is coming soon, which is going to make your private property of himself forever, you know. This is the devil right there, you know. He say, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and thou, thou set thy nest among the sky, the stars, then will I bring thee down, said the Lord, Yehovah Shem Shai. And this is when Esau actually, you know, he, he, he launched the satellites to the, to the sky, you know, you know. So the Most High Yehovah Shem Shai is going to bring him down. You know, he exalted himself as the eagle. Now, if you go and check out the, the what do you call it, the term of, of the ancient Romans, you know, he used to be the eagle, you know. And even now, America, they have the eagle. They have the eagle also on the dollar bill. You know, the eagle is their, is their, is their image right there. You have, they have it everywhere, you know. So the eagle is used to know also Esau. You know, he says, now we're going to come back to this, to this scripture because there are some things we're going to pick and we should go back. He says, we're in, um, verse 24, and when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre and spoken very proudly, you know, these people are so proud that you know they, they can they believe that they are invisible they are untouchable and well they are because this kingdom is given into their hands this is their time to you know to be a rule this is their time to do what they want to do but you know judgment is just right at the corner you know it said therefore there was a great mourning in israel in every place where they were so that the princes and the elders mourned the virgins and the young men were made feeble and the beauty of the women was changed. That was a very wicked period, man. And in which we get into a period that's going to make, you know, all this period look like nothing, you know. We get into those period very soon, which is the, 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 the time of Jacob's trouble, you know. It says, every bridegroom took up lamentation and she that sat in the marriage chamber was in heaviness. The land also was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. And after two years fully expired, the king sends his chief collector of tributes unto the city of Judea, of Judah, who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude, and he spake peaceable words unto them, for all was deceit. For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore. And destroyed much people of Israel and this is another attribute of Esau this is another attribute of the wicked you know he comes he speaks peaceable words to you now let's get a, uh, a precept from from the book of Psalm is this Psalm 53 let's see but uh, this is the book of Psalm psalm 55 excuse me it says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter but war was in his heart his words were softer than oil yet were they drawn swords man <laughs> the prophet david was it was a hell of a prophet man he could the most i really blessed him with a lot of vision you know and the book of the psalms is really deep man it, it has to do with everything man in the book of Psalms, it's there's there are, there is everything in the book of Psalms, man. It speaks of Yahweh Shai, speaks of the wicked, speaks of judgment, speaks of everything, man. So you see, it says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. 
His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Now, this is what they do. You see them on TV, you know, with the tie on, you know, the clean shirt, white shirt, you know, and the, and the suit, you know, blazing suit, suit, or what do you call it, you know. They speak, you know, we want to save the world, want to save lives, want to do this, want to do that. Hey, don't be carried away, you know. <laughs> it says his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. And can, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to poke you with the swords, with the tiny swords, you know, because that's his blessing. Esau's blessing is the sword, you know. So they're trying to poke you with the tiny sword, you know, and, and destroy you, man. Oh, goodness. Now, it says, Karen, we're actually at the verse 30, says, And speak, speak peaceable words unto them, but all was deceit. So you don't need to trust those people, man. They are your enemies. They've always been your enemies. It, it, an enemy line has been drawn, you know, if you read from the book of um, Genesis, I believe chapter 20, 20, 25, no, chapter 26 or so, or 36, if I'm not mistaken, you know, and I'm just paraphrasing, you know, and Esau said in his heart when his father is going to die, he was going to kill his brother Jacob because, you know, he supplanted him, in which it has already been written from the, from the beginning. That you know the 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 elder shall serve the younger, you know. So he has already drawn an enmity enmity nine, you know, and his his hatred is a perpetual hatred towards um towards Jacob, you know, and he carries it to this date. So there is nothing good that can come from this man, you know. Can you make something crooked straight again? No, you know. Is there anything? Is there any light that can come from darkness? No. Is there good that can come from wicked? No. So Esau is a, a perpetual enemy to Jake, you know? So um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, the book of um, Sirach, is it chapter 12, verse 10? It says, never trust thine enemy, for his iron rusted, so is his wickedness, you know? So you would never get anything good from these people. Now it says... And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and walls thereof on every side. And he did this, you know, after speaking peaceable words, in which that's the same thing coming now. You know, these devils are going to be like madmen sparing none, you know, because now lots of people are protesting against the 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 the, 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 the Vicky Venom, you know. People are protesting and all this. Very soon they're going out all martial, you know. They're going to show their horns very soon because they wouldn't be able to stand all this thing. Now they're talking about the new, the new, the new version. I'll put it like that. The Omicron or whatever, you know. And now people, people need to take another, 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 another portion, you know. <laughs> Esau, man. And if you're not if you're not saying all these things, man, you should pray for the most for the most high Yahweh Shemi Al Shai to open your eyes, man. These are not the times you need to be to be passive. These are not the time you need to be just there sitting back and not seeing what's happening, man. You know, the book of Ephesians chapter is it five fifteen, it says, you know, um um redeeming the time, you know. It says, um no, don't want to butcher it. That's Ephesians. Ephesians 5. It says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. You know, the days are evil. Should walk, walk circumspectly, as wise, not as fools, redeem in the time, you know. These are wicked days. This saw is actually, you know, putting out different traps, man, you know, ready to catch you up. <laughs> now he says, I 
But the women and the children took the captive and possessed the cattle. Then builded they the city of David with a great and strong wall and with mighty towers and made it a strong hold for them. And they put them in a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. They stored it also with armor, with armor and victuals. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there. And so they became a sore snare. And this is what Esau is. Esau is a snare to your soul, man. Because, you know, he puts out all different things. And this is the same thing he's doing. You know, remember I said, um, the, your body is the temple of the Most High Yahweh Shemi Al Shai. And, you know, he built himself a fortification, you know, and he became a sore snare. He's a sore snare unto us in these days because how does he build these walls now? He's building them by pushing all this wickedness, you know, the alphabet thing, by pushing all this wicked rap music, by pushing all these dark vibrations into your brain, you know, by frying you with radiation, um, by, by, by putting out all different kinds of things out there, you know, to distract you. The news, the media, ooh, that's the number one, you know, that's the number one tool sorcery tool that Esau uses, you know. So that's how Esau actually becomes a sore snare onto your onto your your body, which is the temple of Most High Yahweh For it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary and an evil adversary to Israel. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it. And that's what they're still doing, you know. They shed innocent blood, you know. We have different things that are coming up coming out you know i also have a video i might post it later you know like speaking about this man how they how they how they breed children you know in order for them to use them for sacrifice and take their blood for adrenochrome you know and this man is really oh damn he says in so much that the inhabitants of jerusalem fled because of them Whereupon the city was made an habitation of strangers and became a strange and became strange to those that were born in her and her own children are left here. Um left her. Can you know the truth has become so strange to Jake, you know? Jerusalem has become so strange to Jake. If you tell Jake that he is the true Hebrew Israelite, he has this um this agent smith effect that comes upon him immediately. He fights back and he doesn't believe he is that, you know. They don't believe. They believe everything else. But they don't want to believe their true identity. They don't want to believe the truth of the Bible, you know. They prefer, you know, these religions. Just like we read at the beginning, you know. So he says, A sanctuary was laid waste like a wilderness. Our fields were torn. a feasts were torn into mourning. a Shabbat into reproaches. A honor into contempt, and as had been a glory, so was a dishonor increased, and her excellency was turned into mourning. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. Does that make you think of something? The NWO, the New World Order, should I put it like that? You know, it says. And everyone should live his laws, so all the heathens agreed according to the commandments of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Shabbat. And which now, if you go back to the secular history, you know, which speaks about this devil Antiochus, you know. And mind you, if you read from the beginning of this chapter, it tells you that when these people came into power, you know, evil was evil was just everywhere, man. The world became wicked, you know, because this is the seed of the wicked. Um, what's that point I'm looking for? And I'm going to read from here. It says, The high priest had traditionally come from the Onayad family, and in 175 BCE, com um, before Common Era, it says, One of its members, Joshua, paid Antiochus IV, Epiphanes, 
okay that's what he is to promote him to the position and dispose his brother onias todd and and this is actually just talking about you know jakes who actually went to become like you know instruments in the hands of this wicked just like we're saying today you know many jakes are sold out you know they are gate watchers you know they, they belong to that group of the bullies you know they lie to, to people because they have influence they are so influential in the society you know that's exactly what's been going on you know so they go to these devils you know because the devil already took over jerusalem you know and you know they they make deals with him you know and check this out it says joshua paid antiochus the fourth to promote him to the position and dispose his brother or Nias, the rightful priest antiochus agreed <laughs> and that's what the devil does he doesn't care you know that's why you know these rappers they, they they sacrifice their brothers they sacrifice their their fellow rappers they they, they they sacrifice themselves you know esau doesn't give a hoot man you know you want this position you want this okay no problem come you pay for me and i i give you the chance to do this and you do that that's what esau is you know the basis of all living things you know it says antiochus the fourth agreed joshua then hellenized his name to jason you know, and encouraged Greek customs in the city and around the temple, notably building a gymnasium, okay, where people exercised in the nude, which was considered shameful to the Jews in the holy precinct. It says Antiochus the Third had continued Seleucus' first respect for the religion, custom of all the people of the empire, but Antiochus the Fourth had no such regard. When Jason sent a messenger menelaus to antiochus the fourth with a sum of money menelaus offered the king more to dispose jason and choose him as high priest and antiochus agreed to this easily menelaus took control of the temple but jason raised an armed group of supporters and attacked antiochus the fourth never known for his patience or consideration then claimed that the temple should be dedicated to him and the creed sacrifices made there would be in his honor. Damn. <laughs> so this man actually, you know, he erected his, um, his image in the temple, you know, and, you know, if you're sacrificing, the sacrifice that needed to be, be to him, you know, they sacrificed all different kinds of abominations on, on the altar, you know, they had, they sacrificed pigs, porks. You know they carried prostitutes to the altars, and that's where you get the the black mass, which is today's mass that they that, that they celebrate in the Catholic Church. Now, if you go to the to the origin of that mass, and let's see if I can quickly go. I don't want I didn't want to make this lesson too long. You know, um, Now, if you write Black Mass, uh, no, not the movie. <laughs> now, if you go to, no thanks. If you go to Black Mass, you know, it says a satanic religious practice. It says Black Mass is a ceremony typically celebrated by various satanic groups. It has allegedly existed for centuries in different forms and is directly based on a Catholic mass. Can you see that's where the Catholic gets their, their mass from? Now, if you go, this is what it is, man. This is what they do. They have the prostitutes on the altars, you know. They put their hands in, in the vagina, they take the, the, the prostitutes um menstrual blood, and that's what they offer to the congregation. You can see that's the priest right there, you know, and all this goes back to the abominations of um of Epiphanes, you know, of Seleucus, one of the generals of Alexander the Great, anyway. So to go on, it says, it says, and everyone should leave his law. So all the Eden agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yeah many also of the israelites consented to this religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the shabbat 
you know and that's what's going on today you know it's very funny to see jake you know accept oh um um i can be whatever i want to be you know i can be a man and decide to be a woman i can be a woman and decide to be a man i am an alphabet person you know it's all strange you know but jake doesn't really think you know because jake is just you know he's just drinking down heavily you know the, the babylon juice that wine of our fornication that got the world you know drunk you know these new philosophies of devils you know that's what jake you know goes after you know they don't care you know the rap music everything you know it's all homosexual things and you know all this is crazy man and those things same thing is still happening today because esau is after your physical your, your your body temple you know your body which is the temple of the most high that's what esau is all about you know he's trying to you know destroy this temple man you know and it says for the king has sent letters for the king has sent letters by messengers unto jerusalem and the cities of judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings in the temple and that they should profane the shabbat and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people set up altars and groves and chapels of idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances and whosoever would not do according to the commandments of the king he said he should die okay in the safe self manner in the self same manner rose he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people commanded the cities of judah to sacrifice city by city that many of the people were gathered unto them to beat everyone that forsook the law and so they committed evils in the land and drove the israelites into secret places even wheresoever they could flee for succor now the 15th day anyway i don't want to make this lesson too long you know i think i'm just going to stop here and make uh, make a few comments you know this is really just wicked you know and this is what this esau edom the so-called white man actually wants you know the devils that are in power today you know they want you to forsake the truth they want you to go after their their false religion after their false philosophies go after every other thing but not the truth you know man it's so crazy because you know they did this to the physical temple now they're doing it to your spiritual temple which is your body you know but jake jake is not waking up you know and there is no longer time you know now he says you know some of the israelites you know they fled into desolate places you know in which that's what's about to come you know be as pilgrims in those days you know because many are not going to accept you know what esau is pushing you know we are not going to corrupt our bodies with these abominations that Esau is trying to put into our temple, you know. So, you know, this lesson can go even longer, but I don't want to make it longer. Now, let's read anyway. Let's read. Let's read. It says, Now the 15th day of the month Kasliu in the hundred forty and fifty years they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and builded idols altars throughout the city of judah on every side and burnt incenses at the door of their houses and in the streets and this is what is spoken of you know by daniel you know it says and when they had rent in pieces the book of the law which they found they burnt them with fire can you imagine and whosoever was found with any book of the testament or if any committed to the law the king's commandment was that they should be put they should put him to death thus the day by the authority unto the israelites every month to as many as were found in the cities now the five and twentieth day of the month they did sacrifice upon the i upon the idol altar which was all upon the altar of god at which time according to the commandment they put to death certain women that had caused their children to be circumcised and they hanged the infants about their necks and refilled their houses and slew them that had circumcised them. Howbeit, howbeit, 
many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing, wherefore they rather they rather to die that they may they might not be defiled with the meat and that they might not profane the holy covenant. So so then they died, and there was a very great wrath upon Israel. Man, you know, these things are really coming back again. You know, now Esau is going to come after all the yaw, you know, all those who refuse his um his Vicky Venom, his serpent simum, you know, is going to come after all of them, you know. They already built like we have in um in Australia where they have already um what they call it, this um these camps, you know. I'm just going to put it like that. These prisons, you know, to put you into, you know, if you refuse to take this serpent Jews, you know. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, you know, preparing the way for the next step, which is the MOT. The MOTB, you know. So, hey, this man is just all after your, your temple, which is your body, you know, which, you know, whosoever defile the temple of the Most High Yahweh Shem Shai shall be destroyed, man. It's better you pay with your life, you know, offering yourself as a living sacrifice in which we do that by going out to teach this truth, you know. And it's better to take example from these people who rather, you know, chose to die than to defile their, their, themselves with, with the abominations of the hidden, you know. So make yourself strong, you know, because the days that are, that are ahead, ahead are really wicked, you know. You need to be circumspect, you need to walk as a wise, you know, and most especially pray to the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Yahweh is his true name. And his son's name, our savior, he who is coming to deliver us is Yahweh Shai. You know? On that day, all these names, all these false names, Jesus, Jehovah, Yeshua, Yahuwah, Yeshua, all these things, they are not going to save you, man. And get it straight, they are not going to save you. So hopefully this lesson was edifying. I'd like to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Wahar Kakudash Shalom.